Hello, yes, uh, Martin Hale from ABB. Uh, I'm responsible for the Northern Ireland uh, and UK and Ireland part of EV charging infrastructure for ABB. And uh, I'm going to keep this very brief, um, uh, but I want to talk about uh, fast charging and how ABB sees this technology and, and its benefits. Um, the first place to start is to say that uh, DC, AC, uh, what's best, how does it work, etc. And the message really is that uh, there is the right technology needs to be put in the right places. And um, if you see the diagram there, all electric vehicles, and I'm talking here about pure electric vehicles, not hybrids or range extended electric vehicles, have an AC charger on board. That gives you the ability to plug in anywhere. And that's why this is a solution for now, because the fuel is everywhere. Electricity is at work, it's at home, it's the places we go to, and that's why this is an opportunity to be zero carbon uh, transport friendly now, today. So uh, the additional ability to charge quickly is what I'm going to talk about, and that's where you have the ability to either have a larger charger on board the car, or you have an opportunity in the infrastructure to have a machine that puts the charge into the battery directly, and it can do it far quicker. There's a lot of discussion and debate about standards, and some of it's being slowing down investment. Uh, that's not what we're seeing at the moment. ABB is very busy installing hundreds, if not thousands, of chargers across the world, especially in Europe. If you look at a map of Europe, ABB has the vast majority of the charging stations that do it quickly, typically 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, and that's the CHAdeMO, Japanese standard. Uh, that's the LEAF, the IMEV, the C0, uh, Peugeot, uh, the Renault, the Mitsubishi, and the, and the Nissan cars. And the Toyota uh, IQ is coming soon, and they will all be rapid chargeable. Um, that was introduced in 2010. Uh, this year, we've got the uh, Renault solution, which is an AC onboard charging solution. Uh, the good news about that technology is it will also be able to charge at th slowly at 3 and 7 kilowatts um, for all cars. So any investment in the French technology of doing it more quickly, uh, which is the Renault Zoe that will be coming out uh, later this year, is, is not a wasted investment. And then something that you probably have all heard about, the Americans and the Germans are coming with a system called Combo. And uh, that's pr probably going to be available next year with cars like the Golf, uh, the Focus, um, uh, the i-Series BMW, etc. Now, a lot of people talk about these technologies needing to be retrofittable, i.e. you put a Chadamo charger in, and then you want to retrofit it maybe to the Combo. Well, it's coming. We don't see that as a, as a sensible solution because, of course, if the cars were already on the road, why would you take out the existing infrastructure? Uh, compare it, if you will, with petrol. If you had a petrol station and diesel came along, you wouldn't pull out the petrol pumps, you'd have them side by side. So the two technologies we believe are going forward can live side by side. Um, I just want to say what uh, the advantages are really of, uh, of doing it quickly, charging a car in 10 or 15, maybe 20 minutes, um, is the range. And what can you do in 24 hours? Well, if you are charging overnight and you haven't got any infrastructure to do it quickly, your range is typically 100 kilometers. However, you put a DC or AC fast charge in your infrastructure, and immediately you can do in excess of 300 kilometers. And if you just purely do that in 24 hours, and we've done it, without breaking any speed limits in normal traffic conditions, you can do up to 1,400 kilometers in 24 hours. And the countries where this investment has taken place, and the sort of investment we're talking about is probably 2% of the OLEV budget, means a whole country can have this infrastructure. Estonia, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Holland, uh, Japan, uh, uh, Estonia, Norway, to name a few, have all ha have this infrastructure in place already, or are, will have it by the end of this year, which means if you buy a leaf in these countries, um, you're able to drive it all day. It can be your first car, it can be your only car, and you don't need hybrids, you don't need to wait for uh, hydrogen fuel cell technology, you can be zero emission driving around quite happily today. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about locations and put this sort of infrastructure. If you put it on highways, that's typically 100 amps. That's not easily available. Only 20% of locations have 100 amps availability. But looking at destinations, such as shopping malls, um, uh, clubs, 
bars, restaurants, anywhere you go typically for an hour, we could have technology that's under £10,000 that would use only a 32 amp supply and can charge in under 30 minutes from 30% to 80% state of charge. So you can see it's affordable, it's available now, and it can be installed at just about any location with existing grid technology. Uh, I've mentioned some of the countries already, but this infrastructure is absolutely happening everywhere. The UK is slow. Why? It's probably because of the way we've done our um, uh, funding through the government. That's because it's been regionalized, but there is new uh, initiatives coming forward that will be able to do it. Um, I want to talk finally about a real case model. We have examples now, real data, where companies are selling charging services. They are fast charging services. We don't see there's any value in slow charging services. And companies, new companies, are uh, going into profit without any extra EVs on the road in year three. And that's with no government help whatsoever. So the message to you is there is of a business case for setting up a fast charging service today. The technology is there now. Buy a leaf, get an infrastructure in place at 2% the olive budget, and we'll have zero emissions. Thank you.